In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, His mercy has given His Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank You for planting in us the seed of Your Word by Your Holy Spirit. Help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David and my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before and none like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your teaching. 
Our second reading this morning is from St. Paul's letter to the church at Rome, the 8th chapter, verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. Those whom he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put another parable before them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it, is, when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this eighth Sunday after Pentecost 2020, the word comes to us from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 13th chapter, the promise of the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The parables that we have here this morning, and there are quite a few of them there in that 13th chapter, are usually read by most people as law. We are to do the sowing. We are to create. We are to find the treasures and, and, and to sell everything to gain the field. 
We are to do the searching for the pearl. And then when it's found, give it all up to obtain the pearl. We are to lower the net and to do the fishing. That's how we often read these parables. Why do we always seem to turn stuff like this into something about ourselves? Do you have any friends like that? Maybe you're like that. Where the conversation, maybe it's about another topic, and it always circles around to who? Them. Why do we always do that? We have a habit of that, don't we? And for a lot of people, the parables that our Lord teaches us here These are fertile ground for this kind of reading of Scripture, that we read ourselves into it. We like to think, or at least some folks like to think, that if they study the parables um, that we have here this morning, um, that there will be some sort of secret code in how to live life a bit better. That in these parables you can live your best life now if you somehow find that, that secret to um, finding that thing in your heart, that treasure in your heart, or, or discovering that undiscovered thing about yourself and that you can now live your, your best life now. Is that what our Lord is teaching us this morning? A lot of times it'll be, um, you know, if I just work a bit harder on this project that, that deals with my own life, that, that somehow I'll have this enlightened plan for the years ahead. These parables often bring that out of us. I understand why we do this. We are conditioned by the world and our own flesh to think this way. If you work harder, you will usher in the kingdom of heaven, at least for your own life, we think. If we only strive for the right causes, then we can usher into this world a heavenly peace and righteousness. You know, this has been tried, right, in history. 1917 in Russia, the worker's paradise. It was tried in North Korea and China. How'd that all work out? Were we able to usher in the worker's paradise, the kingdom of heaven on earth, through our own efforts and striving and, 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 and merit? No. That's not how the kingdom of heaven comes among us. I mean, we can can shout all day long in our own self-righteousness at God and try to call down the kingdom of heaven to us, and that won't work. None of that works. In fact, we're bidden to repent of such things. Do you remember at the beginning of the Gospel of St. Matthew, after our Lord is... Uh, goes through the temptation in the wilderness. After his baptism, he goes into the temptation of the wilderness and he faces down Satan and, and hunger and all sorts of difficulty. Do you remember the first thing he does after that? He starts preaching. He starts preaching the word. And do you remember the first words of that first sermon of our Lord Jesus after the temptation of the wilderness? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus has come among us in the flesh. And where Jesus is, there you have the kingdom of heaven. So then the kingdom of heaven does not come like any sort of kingdom that we can build here on earth through our own efforts and and works. You don't earn it. You can't merit it. You cannot call it down. Instead, the kingdom of heaven comes to you in Jesus Christ as a pure gift. These parables that we have before us this morning are very different from what we think they are in terms of law. They are promises. Promises. Promises of our Lord Jesus Christ to sinners. And what promise do sinners need the most? If sin brings about death, what's the promise we need the most? The promise of forgiveness. Forgiveness. This is how the kingdom of heaven grows. By the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
that in no uncertain terms declares that God in Christ has chosen you. He has chosen you to give you the promise of the forgiveness of sins. How does the kingdom of heaven grow? By preaching the promise of the resurrection. That you joined to Christ by faith, you too shall rise, and death doesn't get the last word over you. You, dear Christians, have this promise. And when you have the promise of our Lord Jesus, you know that God will not forsake you. You heard St. Paul talk about there in the 8th chapter of Romans. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You have that promise. And so you know that even when you're not faithful, who is faithful? The one who makes the promise to you always. You know that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And to know that means that you do not have to fear. You do not have to live in fear. In fact, this is transformative. When you have that promise, when, you're, when you've grasped onto that promise, this is transformative. It's like, it's like leaven in dough that rises. Because it's this promise that we have preached to us into our ears. This external word in Holy Spirit that brings to us faith, trust, confidence in the promise given to us that has transformed us from sinners dead in our sins and trespasses to people alive in Christ forever. Reborn in Him. And this makes us bold. People who are unafraid. Because we know who gets the last word. We know the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know the one who makes these promises to us doesn't make promises that can be broken. So, as we read these parables through the lens of a promise, then, you, dear Christians, are the treasure. You, dear Christians, are the pearl. You are the ones who were bought at a high price. It is Jesus who has sold it all for you. It's Jesus who goes to the cross and takes your place. It's Jesus who brought you ashore to that, 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 that place as it talks about in, in Revelation. That shore that's covered with a multitude of the nations that knows no darkness that lives in the light, it is Jesus who has brought you to this place and will bring you to this place by His spilled blood on the cross and His glorious resurrection. Have you understood these things? Jesus asked His disciples that after He gave them these promises of the parables. Have you understood these things? And of course they said, yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it, right? Did they? I suspect that none of us fully grasp what has been given to us in Christ. What has been done for us in Christ. We won't fully grasp that until that last day when we're gathered with all the saints around Jesus in His kingdom. Until that day, we have this embassy. That's what this is. We have this embassy of the kingdom of heaven right here known as Salem Church. And here we have Jesus before us and with us as he promises in his word, in his holy absolution, in his baptism, in his Lord's Supper. These are treasure. Because they deliver to us Jesus and with Jesus the kingdom of heaven. Where Jesus is, there you'll find the kingdom of heaven. That's the promise of the kingdom of heaven for you. Thanks be to God.
let us rise and confess our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the church. O Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession and granted mercy upon mercy. Hear your people who cry to you in need. And remember us according to the favor you have shown to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. That the church may prosper. The good news of Jesus Christ go forth unhindered. And the Spirit bring many into the fellowship of the redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we remember our baptism into Christ and live boldly in our vocation as his children no matter the difficulties of this fallen world, within our families, in our neighborhood, and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would bless our nation and those who govern us. That we may use the gift of freedom to live holy, upright, and godly lives to the praise of His glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have that God's people may recognize the true treasure of the cross and rejoice in the resurrection, pursuing with all their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls the things of His kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may be healed, the troubled granted peace, the grieving comforted, and the dying kept in peace. We especially pray this morning for Connie Ditzler, Jeff Donahue, Jerry Fleischman, Diane Morris, Shirley Wechter, Joanne Stahl, Mary McQuaid, Laverne Swigert, Joyce Tilly, and the family and friends of Janet Fisher. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, mighty Lord, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. Hear the prayers of your people who cry to you in their need and who plead to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear Christians, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Our service continues with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. Your most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace, and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things already. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Dear Christians, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.